What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Lock on Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to builtbar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order. It is Monday, March 29th in the year 2021. And in the midst of of all the madness in the NC2A tournament, one team that did not make the tournament called Ohio State to see if their coach would be the next basketball coach at their school. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked On Buckeye. Line up for today in segments two and three. We're going to talk about three players that play one position and how. They will need to step up in a big way for this side of the team, the offense, to be successful. We begin today's show talking about that very thing. An individual that I mentioned a couple, well, 20 seconds ago, to where the Indiana Hoosiers called Ohio State to see if Chris Holtman would leave Columbus to be the head man in Bloomington. During the tournament, I've been so wrapped up into the basketball, the excitement, the overtime game that that just took place prior to this recording between UCLA and Alabama. I have loved every second of it. Also, with me having a tie to Indiana University, my mom was a graduate of the school, anytime there's anything going on with that basketball program, a part of me is focusing on that to see what exactly is going on. What is your thought process? I've listened to more podcasts than normal. I've listened to more sports talk radio shows than normal just to see what is going on with that school and who will possibly be the next head man at Indiana University. IU basketball has been an embarrassment for quite some time. They've had some good moments, but more often than not, they have not had those good moments. Not only did IU call Chris Holtman and see if Chris Holtman would want to be the next head man, they also hired somebody that used to be a head coach at the Ohio State University. This comes from a tweet from Jeff Goodman. He reads, quote, Indiana zeroed in on Ohio State's Chris Holtman earlier in the week. Source told Stadium, Holtman is happy in Columbus. Holtman is one of four coaches who has seven consecutive 20-win seasons, end quote. There is a reason why on this podcast I say, Ohio State fans, you should be very, very happy to have Chris Holtman right now. No, it's not the best, and he's constantly getting better and improving. I think defense is one thing he needs, that, that the team needs to work on. Also, recruiting. We'll talk about one of those two things later in the week. But Chris Holman is one of the best coaches in the Big Ten right now. Part of the reason that you see him harp on the refs so much during the season is because he knows how good of a coach he is, and he's not getting the respect that he believes he deserves. And many of the commentators, you watch the games, they'll say the same thing. Chris Holman deserves to get these calls. He does. But for some reason, he's not getting them. In Indiana, four years ago, it's interesting how things go back and back to the way that they should have been. Probably, I you probably should have gone this route four years ago. But Chris Holtman said, hey, if the Ohio State job comes open, I'm going there. It's one of those jobs that I can't turn down. But four years ago, Indiana fires Tom Crean. There's a talk. Archie Miller, Chris Holtman. Many Ohio State fans say, Archie Miller, let's go ahead and get him. So many Ohio State says, who is Chris Holtman? What has he done? Yeah, he has some good moments at Butler, but it's Butler. This is a big-time school. Yeah, I don't know about this one. What do we see? Chris Holtman, no less than 20 wins while at Ohio State. Yes, a second tournament, a second weekend trip in the tournament. That's to come. I believe that's going to come. Optimistic Jay is going to always be optimistic unless there's no reason to be optimistic at that time. But many people have been critical of this, and I think it's paused to stop and to just think about how good it is at Ohio State with Chris Holtman. For Indiana to zero in on on Chris Holtman in the way that Jeff Goodman says, I think that was a smart move for Indiana at that time. Yeah, you're going to make calls to Brad Stevens, to Chris Beard, to all these guys around there, Dane Fife at Michigan State. You're going to make all these calls 
lot of them don't want to come. A lot of them are already in comfortable spots. They're, they have cushiony jobs. Dane Fife might already have the Michigan State job locked up after Tom Bizzo retires. I don't know. But if I'm Dane Fife, I don't leave uh, East Lansing to come to Indiana either. But for Chris Holman to stay, it says a lot about the basketball situation at Ohio State, what he has at Ohio State, how comfortable he feels in Columbus. But also, Indiana did not only go after Chris Holtman, the current Ohio State basketball coach, they went after the former Ohio State basketball coach as well, the one, the man that stepped down right before Chris Holtman came to town. Now, this tweet, I'm going to be, read it word for word, from Greg Doyle. Now, Greg Doyle is a sports columnist for the Indianapolis Star. Greg Doyle's tweet reads this, quote, IU is hiring former Butler and Ohio State coach Thad Mata as associate AD for men's basketball administration. Mata will assist an IU staff that will be led by new coach Mike Woodson, end quote. Now, I think that's a phenomenal hire for IU. Now, I don't think they're going to be able to beat Ohio State in a, in a grand way next year. I think Ohio State has a lot of talent, and IU has to figure out what guys are going to stay if they can get guys to stay. But I do believe that model in an administrative or an advisory role, this is, prim this is primarily for basketball. It's a basketball position for him to be in this role uh, ahead of Mike Woodson, advising Mike Woodson. Mata knows recruiting. Mata knows the uh, college lifestyle. Mata knows things that he can help Mike Woodson groom him with. Hey, you could go after Chris Holtman. I understand it. I would too. But if I'm Chris Holtman, I will leave Columbus for Bloomington, but also – Smart Scott Dolson at AD at, I, at Indiana. Very, very smart to go at another Ohio State guy. If we can't get Holtman, maybe that Mata. If he, if, he if he doesn't want to be the head coach, maybe we can get him at some role in our school to help us bring back the magic of Indiana. Happy for that Mata. Happy for Chris Holtman. I'm happy that both of them are happy. Let's step away very quickly. When we come back, it's all about the running back position and why Three guys are going to be asked to step up in a big way in the fall. But first, excuse me, in the spring. But first, check this out. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over, but NBA, college basketball, and even the NHL are in full swing. Bet online even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. Bet online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets. And guys, it's even free to sign up. Head to betonline.ag on your computer or mobile device. And when you sign up, make sure you use promo code locked on to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Once again, that is betonline.ag on your computer or your mobile device. And when you sign up, make sure you use promo code locked on L O C K E D O N to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Get all the sports news you need in under 20 minutes with the new Locked On Today podcast. Host Peter Bukowski updates you on the latest news in every major sport with the help of our local experts. Follow the Locked On Today podcast wherever you get your podcast. If this is your first time listening or watching Locked On Buckeyes, I want to say welcome. Or if it's your first time in a long time watching or listening to the podcast, I want to say welcome back. And yes, I do say watch because this podcast is available via WKYC on YouTube or WKYC.com. You can catch the video version of every single episode of Locked On Buckeyes. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Buckeyes so you don't miss a beat. A fresh episode drops for you every Monday through Friday. There's one position at Ohio State on the football side of things that there were three guys that got some touches last year. Not a lot of touches, but some. And in the some in a few touches that they got, we saw flashes of potential good signs from all of them. Unfortunately, one of them, we didn't see much flashes of good things, primarily because, as he said, and I stated last week, he wasn't ready. And when he did get in, in the natty, he went back to the sidelines and told his position coach, Coach, you're right. I apologize because I'm not ready. The three gentlemen that I'm talking about right now, Mayan Williams, Steel Chambers, and I still love that name, and Marcus Crawley. 
Williams, 10 carries, 64 yards last year, 6.4 yards a pop. Chambers, 9 carries, 86 yards last year, 9.6 yards a pop. Crawley, 6 carries, 14 yards last year, 2.3 yards a pop. That is That comes out to be 7.4% of the carries that Ohio State had last year, 7.8% of the yards Ohio State had last year, and a whopping 0% of the touchdowns because neither one of them scored a touchdown when they were on the field last year. Remember a run. And early in the year, I was uh, corresponding with uh, messaging someone on Twitter, a listener to the podcast, about Steel Chambers. They sh- they tweeted at me a few things back to back to back. I mean, this was a consistent conversation because they had some questions and I was trying to provide some answers and just my general thoughts about the situation. Messages. I mean, it was constant dialing back and forth. And might I say, I'm going to stop right here. If you want to contact me via Twitter um, or email me, jstevens317 at gmail.com, if you're not on the Twitter, do that. I don't care. I'll follow back. I If I haven't followed you back yet, message, <laughs> message me. Because uh, as you know, sometimes a Twitter does not alert you. I will follow you back. And just have a healthy, consistent dialogue between myself and you to keep this conversation going, not just about the football, but about the basketball all year long. But one thing I noticed about all three of these guys, you know what Crawley can do? If you watch the Twitter videos, you see some things that he has done just in spring practice where you're like, ooh, 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 that boy can be good. There was a run, that's what I mentioned earlier. But the conversation that I had with someone on Twitter last year at the, at the beginning of the season, still Chambers had a run. I believe this was against the this was maybe the Nebraska game, a second quarter. Uh, I know he came in a little bit, had three or four carries, looked good, and then didn't come back into the game. I know it was early in the season. I may not have been Nebraska, but it was one of the earlier games in the season. I know for sure it was not Penn State because a lot of the backups didn't really play in that game. Let's course it was an injury that happened remember the corner got uh, hurt I forget the name but uh, the backup corner had to come in at that time but still Chambers had a run back up in your own end zone if Ohio State has the ball the end zone they're back in their own they're back in their um deep in their own territory um I believe Fields took the snap for some of these plays at, literally in the end zone if still Chambers got the ball got a handoff and that was a big old hole but it's like man he, he can look good. But as we all know, last year, Teague and Sermon got the bulk of the carries. So much so that, let me pull the stats up really quick. Sermon had 116 carries. Teague had 104 carries. Fields had 81 carries. So those, those are the three leading totals as far as who got carries last year. Um, fourth was Mayan Williams. Fifth was still Chambers. Sixth was Mar- Marcus Crawley. In that, or just talk about how the hierarchy and the depth chart last year. I like Chambers. I think he needed some more consistency to see if he could sustain drives, if he could be a, a consistent runner in the offense with that offensive line, if he could beat out Teague or Sermon at, at that time to see if he could be a viable piece and in the rotation for Ohio State. Didn't get the extra touches, so we see how things went. But think about this year. Teague last year had 30.8% of the carries last year for Ohio State, 24.4% of the yards, and 42.1% of the touchdowns. 104 carries, 514 rushing yards, 4.9 yards a pop, then eight touchdowns. Now, if you put this together, the four of them together, 37.6% of the carries, 32.3% of the yards, 42.1% of the touchdowns, that is Teague, Williams, Chambers, and Crowley. The bulk of the carries, the bulk of the touches, percentages came from Sermon and Fields. 58.4% of the carries came from Sermon and Fields. 59.7% of the rushing yards came from Trey and Justin. And then 47, I believe that is 0.5%. Can't read my own handwriting. That could be a 3% of the touchdowns. I think it's 47.3% of the touchdowns came from Sermon and Fields. And you're asking, you may be thinking like, Jay, why are you talking about Williams, Chambers, and Crowley? We know how good they can be. We have seen, we've seen some, the video in the film and some, some picks or some, excuse me, not picks, some videos on practice. We know what 
possibly can happen. But why are you talking about them when Teague is still here? Well, what we saw last year, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a conversation throughout the rest of the show. What we saw last year was that Teague was not the better running back. He was not. He got a lot of the carries, 100, 104. But it was very, very clear that the best running back was Trey Sermon. 116 carries, 870 rushing yards, 7.5 yards a pop, and four touchdowns. When it comes to the running backs catching the ball outside of the, out of the backfield, Trey Sermon had the most receptions as well. 12 receptions, 94 95 receiving yards, 7.9 yards of reception. That's a total of 128 touches for Trey Sermon versus 109 for Teague. 965 yards from scrimmage for Sermon. 560 for Teague. 7.5 yards a touch for Sermon. 5.1 yards of touch for Teague. Four touchdowns for Sermon. Eight touchdowns for Teague. That's a that's a massive massive gap. For there to be 128 to 109 and the discrepancy in the difference between Sermon's touches from, from scrimmage and Teague's, I'm a little alarmed by what the possibility is of Teague being the consistent starter from day number one. I do think Williams, Chambers, and Crowley, via spring practice, not getting ahead of the spring game, I said fall earlier, got to backtrack. I believe at some point one of them will step up and emerge as one two, three in that order as far as Williams, Chambers, Crowley, who's going to be one, who's going to be two, who's going to be three, and as, as far as who's competing with Teague to be the number one spot. I am, I don't think that there's going to be a freshman that'll be the starting running back at any time during the season as lethal and as good as the freshman running backs are. I do believe it's one of these four. How will they show out? What will they do to, to stand out from the rest? Well, stick around. And when we come back, I'll let you know what that is. But first, check this out. We have been telling you about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the market for a while now. Built Bar is the amazing low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, amazing tasting protein bar with 100% chocolate on all bars. Now is the time to find out which Built Bar is the best. It is Built Bar Madness. Today's matchup is. Caramel brownie versus coconut brownie chunk. Caramel brownie. Mm, mm, mm. As much as I love, as much as I love, you guys have heard me numerous times, love Built Bar's coconut. Mm, 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 mm. Caramel brownie takes the nod in this one. Go to BuiltBar.com or to at bar underscore built on Twitter. Remember to use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order. That is LOCKED15. L O C K E D 1 5 to get 15% off your next order at builtbar.com and check back to see who won today's matchup and who will become the best tasting protein bar. The NFL draft is weeks away. It's time to start following our Lockwood NFL Draft Duo, duo the Draft Dudes podcast, watches every prospect so that you don't have to. In the Locked On NFL Draft podcast is your daily draft news and mock draft podcast. Follow Locked On NFL Draft and Draft Dudes on the Radio.com app or wherever you get your podcast. Before we continue this conversation about the running backs and what they can do or need to do to step up and be head and shoulders above the rest, we want to look ahead to the rest of the week. Tomorrow, the plan is to have Dan Hope of 11 Warriors come on the show and help us get ready for the Pro Day on Wednesday. We'll recap the Pro Day. Then Thursday and Friday, still up in the air. But trust me, we're going to have a lot of fun this week talking football, maybe a little bit more basketball later in the week as well. We got Williams. We got Chambers. We got Crawley. Only focusing on the guys that played last year at Ohio State. Yes, some of you guys may say, oh, what about Travion? Hey. This is a conversation for the gentlemen that have played at Ohio State and played last season. Just to recap, just get you up to speed, talk a little bit about touches and percentages from these three men, well, four of them, and then how the four of them together, what they combine for percentage-wise for carries, rushing yards, and touchdowns, then also how what Ohio State is losing between Trey Sermon and Justin Fields on the ground. But at some point, at some point, Williams, Chambers, Crowley, 
someone has to emerge. Someone has to step up and stick their neck, their neck up. And you know how it is a kid in school who always has their hand up. It's like, man, what is this? What, what, what are you doing? It's like, oh, teacher loves me, man. Why? Because I'm always raising my hand. I'm always first in line. I'm always the one doing what's extra so that I can be noticed. And it's the same thing here with these three men. I will say four, because Teague is in that conversation as well. Even though he did start last year and got a lot of carries, second most on the team last year, it's very clear that there's something there with Teague. that if you're watching with your eyeballs, take your glasses off like I'm doing right now, put them back on, and you're like, mm, 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 Teague, uh, you're good, buddy. you good. But mm, mm, mm. something about me watching a football or you had the ball in your hand, I just don't know if you're the best running back for the team right now. But Teague knows. He has to fight. <laughs> that boy got to fight hard to keep. Not just in like a physical fight. It may be fights in practice. I've always gotten in a fight in practice at some point. Don't have time to share that story right now. But I'm just saying, there's every now and then you may get a fight or two. Why? These boys are, comp these boys are competing every single day. Mayan Williams, Steel Chambers, Marcus Crawley. What can they do? What should they do to emerge and step up and say, Coach, I know Teague, what he did his freshman year, what he did last year, but I don't know if he deserves to get all those carries. Not saying it with your words, but your actions. Be a sponge. This is going to be really kind of, it's going to be kind of elementary for some, but also somebody's like, hey, man, I need to write that down. Be a sponge. I don't like that. I'm going to write that down right now. Be a, be a sponge. Why? Because in those film rooms, those film sessions, you're going to get coached hard. I'm not talking about the learning aspect of it, but you want to get coached hard, really, really hard. And as you, things get ramped up in spring practice and the hitting continues and then during the spring game, which will be very, very vanilla, uh, not really showing too much of your uh, uh, game day stuff and stuff that you're, you're going to happen that you want to see in the fall, but just very, very vanilla, uh, very, very elementary for some. Hey, that read. Read option, make sure you hit it like it's a regular run, even though before you may, you may, you may know that you see the same thing the quarterback sees, you know, not getting the ball. Run that thing hard every single time. In film sessions, when you get coached hard, don't be soft. Don't be soft at all. This is a man's game. Ain't no time for you to be soft. Actually, this is a game in general. Don't be soft. Don't, hey, coach, the coach got on me, man. I don't want to hear that. No, no, no. Take it. Be a sponge every time a coach says something that's informative positive or negative, or just something in general to help you learn something about that particular play. Be a sponge. Also, I'm not going to say show out in a way that you're going to have to show out, but it, via that 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 uh, clip I saw on Twitter of Marcus Crawley running every rep, go hard, every single time. Every single time, go rep, go hard. One, if you don't go hard, you could get hurt. You might be out for the season. That would suck. That would be horrible. I'm not trying to say that about anybody, not even a team that I can't stand, the, the team up north. But you have to go hard every single rep. Be a sponge. Go hard every rep. And make sure in that weight room, in the classroom, when you're stretching or uh, classroom stretching, when you're stretching, whatever you're doing, go above and beyond. Be the one that's there. Make sure your skill set is being there and is stepping up above the rest. Why? Because you need to. Because there are people like me that believe as good as Teague is as a running back, there is another section of this playbook that can be tapped into with somebody else getting the bulk of the carries. I'm not saying Teague should not get any run. I'm not saying that at all. But the offense did definitely look better in his first year. JK was amazing than last year as well with Sermon when Teague was not RB1. I don't believe Teague should be RB1. If the season were to start right now, I don't like this conversation, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. If the season were to start right now, would Teague be RB1? Probably. A little hesitant. When I previewed and projected my depth chart, I did have Teague at RB1. I also said I don't think he'll be the RB1 throughout the entirety of the season. Who do I think? Who is my first choice right now? Well, if I had to go RB2 and RB3, I got a tie for RB2. Sorry, Brian Williams. Chambers and Crowley, I think those two gentlemen are vying for RB2 right now. Right now, I think Teague's an RB1. I think he, had, think he just has it by seniority. But I wonder if he'll keep that seniority aspect of being RB1 before the season starts. Because I think right now, Chambers and Crowley, as they'll be fighting 
for that spot. We'll see, possibly see what it is that they could do to take over that starting role as Ohio State's running back in the fall. Not knocking Mayan Williams. There's a lot of promise there as well. But I think right now it's a two-headed race, Chambers and Crawley. I like Chambers' running style. I, I like all the running styles. That's just how I see it right now. Could be right, could be wrong. A lot of times lately, your boys are, your boys have been right. Thank you guys so much for listening and or watching Locked on Buckeyes. I really, really appreciate you guys watching the podcast and or listening to the podcast. Remember, five-star review, guys. Fill the review section on Apple with five-star reviews. You guys can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked on Buckeye. One last thing I got to mention about the running backs. Be able to absorb contact and move forward. Just like the podcast is this week. This is only Monday as we move forward throughout this week. We're going to have a lot of fun together. You know, there's two words that I used to end this podcast with quite a long time. It's also a hashtag that we see all the time on Twitter. It's escaped me. It's hitting, It's hit my Twitter feed. I've typed it out, hit send, but I have not said it here, and I'll say it right now as we close out today's show.